As an author, you can waste a lot of time and energy and produce a lot of stress copying the wrong person when it comes to learning how to market your book. So here's how to find better authors to learn from when it comes to book marketing. For better or for worse, the business side of being an author is more in your hands than ever. I think that's a good thing. Uh, if you're an indie author, obviously you have control over the whole process. Even if you are going through the traditional route in publishing, uh, the publishers will expect you to do a lot of your own book promotion. And the more you put in, the more they will be willing to put in. And there's some fun examples from Brandon Sanderson picking up special limited edition runs that might not be feasible for bookstores or um, other large traditional publishers, uh, but his fans wanted, and he actually managed to pick up a good chunk of change and make that work for him. So um, there are a lot of avenues for doing the business side of things. But that can be overwhelming. You easily could use or benefit from an MBA because essentially, if you wanna support yourself writing, that means you want to start a business, a business of writing. Or you know, maybe you just write whatever you feel like and hope you strike it rich. It's kinda of like buying a lotto ticket <laughs> with your writing. If you wanna take that approach and that works for you fine and you're not counting on supporting yourself, that's one thing, but if you actually want to improve your reach and impact as an author, as well as support yourself, you're going to start a business. So instead of getting an MBA, it's probably much quicker to find a good role model and emulate them. But the question is, who should you pick to emulate? Who can you learn marketing from? If you pick the wrong person, this can be really frustrating. As I am talking to local authors during book launches, one thing that comes up is comparisons with this person or that person. And I find, well, does that person have a platform? Do they have an email list? Do they have these other things? Uh, a lot of times people are frustrated because they're comparing themselves to an author who's in a completely different space marketing. And they feel like they can never have the success they want or market their book because they're comparing themselves with someone who's years ahead. And trying to catch up to a couple years of work in a in like just a couple months for your book launch not realistic it's going to be much more helpful if you can pick someone who's closer to where you are so let's dive into who to pick to learn marketing from hey quick interruption so my mission is to fix the internet for sci-fi and fantasy creators and fan bases i think there are reasons why it is so hard to build a following and support yourself. Mainly that like most websites aren't built for building communities and fan bases. They're built so large websites can advertise to your audience. And so um, that's, that's just hugely broken and insane. It, does, it should not be as hard as it is to create a following and support yourself on creative work. That doesn't mean everyone's gonna get there, but I would like more people to be able to support themselves uh, with their creative work. That's my mission. This channel is just the beginning of that. I want to build better websites and tools. If you like and subscribe, you can help me build the channel and more quickly get to a place where I can build you tools that will make this whole business of writing thing easier. So please like and subscribe, share, share. That's great. That too, yes, please. <laughs> or tell me, if this video is not good enough to earn your like and subscribe, tell me below in the comments what I could give you that would be more valuable. Thanks. Who should you not copy? Well, you shouldn't just look for the most successful person in your field because they are typically years ahead of you. They're, what they remember of being in your stage is going to be kind of vague. It might be misremembered or nonspecific, not 
uh, specific enough to be helpful, or even if they can offer specific advice, it might not be appropriate for someone at your early stage. They might be remembering a later stage, etc. So uh, there are a lot of reasons why it's great to note some authors that are aspirational for you for like motivation and kind of long-term thinking, but in the short term, learning how to market, you don't want to find the most successful person. Another mistake you might make is simply going to whoever is the most like you. So in terms of their platform, that actually can be somewhat helpful, but in terms of like writing, genre, etc., cetera, um, the more like you they are, the more helpful it is, but you wanna make sure first that they are actually good at marketing. So if this is someone who's like you and is already very successful, again, you can run into all of those traps previously before, um, including the fact that if they were successful 20 years ago, they were probably successful in a more traditional publishing environment and what they say may not be relevant at all anyway, or it may not be their personal marketing that got them to where it is. It might be some personal networking, it might be you know chance, or it might be decades of quality writing in magazines that people don't read anymore. Like You don't know what the marketing could be. And if they're not successful already, but they're very like you, well, okay, great, but you don't wanna follow, copy someone's marketing for whom it's not working. So um, don't just go for the most successful. Don't just go for the person who is most like you. What should you go for? Well, one of the things that you should go for is finding a person who is just one step ahead of you. So a little bit more successful, like one or two milestones ahead. That way, when you ask them what the next step is for you or what they would do in your situation, one, they are more likely to have a specific memory, um, a specific, uh, specific guidance that worked, at least for their situation. And two, well, you're more likely to be able to ask that in the first place, or at least find recent evidence of that stalking them on their social profiles online. <laughs> so um, finding someone one step ahead is a lot more powerful than finding you know, the most towering figure in your genre or field. So I would go for someone who is just one step ahead of you. A great way to do that actually is to look for local authors. You can either just research them online and ask them out to lunch um, or a virtual meeting. You could go to local conventions, writers groups, etc., and just talk to people who are one step ahead. If they, um, if you are not yet in a place where you've published a book, you can ask them about their publishing research. If this is someone who's published, you can ask them about their platform and growing your you know, platform, et cetera. So um, finding someone local is a great way to do this. And what should you copy when you are copying someone one step ahead of you? Yes, you can copy their metrics, sales numbers, reviews. Uh, you can copy kind of intermediate metrics to get those sales numbers or reviews, how many posts you do or how many interviews you do. Um, and that can be helpful, but if that's all you do, it's going to likely be a source of stress. <laughs> you'll just be comparing yourself to somebody else and you'll feel frustrated. However, some great things to copy are to go ahead, well, one, to sit down and ask them what you should copy, right? Ask them how big their platform was before launch, what networks worked best for them, what posts got the most engagement, or what interviews got the most engagement. You can, you can ask them straight up, maybe in an email, lunch, right, et cetera, other scenario. Uh, but the other thing is you can also do your own research. You can go back, look through their posts, see what got the most engagement, et cetera. So, um, those specific tactics, right? Like how, how long did it take you to go from Y to Z <laughs> um, in terms of your platform, on which platform, which tactics did you do, which ones were most effective, right? And so that can give you kind of a baseline. This is about how long it should take. Maybe if you're particularly enterprising, you can shave that down by emulating the things that worked best from that for them while still doing some regular testing of your, you know, occasional your own type of posts, etc., just to try new ideas or see if there's something else that works. So 
um, get someone else that is one step ahead of you. But another overlooked, vastly overlooked source of learning marketing is actually from peers. Now, a lot of you guys have writing groups and you focus on writing, but there is a lot of power to talk to talking to your peers more about uh, the marketing publicity side. I think we commiserate, but we don't spend a lot of time focused on the how-to. I recently had a great lunch with a couple of authors locally where I've done kind of one-on-one -on -one interviews, but it was fun to start moving into slightly bigger interviews, more groups, more people, but bouncing ideas off of each other about what works and what doesn't work. And I learned a lot about how to think about book pitches, uh, what's their purpose, and what makes a good one from that discussion. And I don't think we as authors do that enough. So um, that is an untapped source of value for a lot of authors who already have writers group or are in communication with writers. And there's additional values. At a convention recently, I was listening to someone who their journey to getting publishing, uh, to being published and eventually getting rewards like took 10 years in the which they were a part of various writers groups so the, the he spent a lot of time supporting other people and, you know, kind of giving them moral support or I'm sure the typical likes, blurbs, whatever. And, you know, over 10 years. And when finally things crystallized for him so he could get published and he had a shot at it, there were a lot of relationships. He had a network that he had that was already warm and ready to help him. So when he finally got enough purchase to get published, he had a lot more traction and they accelerated his progress forward. So uh, another reason why to go to your peers for discussing you know, marketing tips. It's just, it's another way you can build your network. And then thirdly, this is something probably a lot of authors don't think about, but I ran into this again and again when I was being a business coach, especially in the education space. Education companies are slow. They often like to release one big project, a product for the school year and, you know, kind of following that calendar. And very often for a new program releasing once a year is not enough to actually learn you know one what the features that needs uh what features that particular thing needs or like matching it to the right niche or the marketing and so very often companies that did this one big release in the fall uh, whatever product line they did with that with usually failed. It ran out of money before they actually learned how to make it more successful. So uh, the learning here is that the more product launches you can do and learn from in a space of time, the better. Now, authors are in a similar situation. You write a novel. For most people, that's going to take at least a year or multiple years. Trying to learn marketing once a year or once every few years is nowhere near enough to get escape velocity and get good at marketing and maximize the sales that you can get from your, uh, from your book. Without turning into like a book factory, you know, just spewing out stuff unedited every couple months or something, right? Without doing that, how can you increase your learning? You build a group of peers who are more regularly launching books. You get a big enough group together and then you help them with their launches. That way you can help out just a little bit here and there on book launches, several book launches throughout the year, and that will accelerate your ability to learn marketing for yourself. Like, this sounds like, oh, I don't have time to help somebody else, but this is, I mean, one, it's good. You know, it's a good thing to do as a human being to help others. But like, also just from a purely selfish perspective, that learning is gold. So get involved with uh, your peers and this could be a distributed network. But again, I like to go local and here in Austin, I'm forming a group focused on promotion and it has been fantastic working with Abby Goldsmith, who I have an interview uh, with on this channel. You can look her up, but getting feedback from what she's trying and what she's doing, uh, trying to help her out in terms of brainstorming ideas 
and uh, she's busy out promoting her book, but hopefully we'll do some more audience research and pitching together. And that's going, all of that stuff is super helpful to learn and practice before I finish my novella, my first novella, as, as a business coach to author. Um, and then learn the business of um, marketing and pitching that novella. So if you can get a group together where people are launching more frequently collectively and you're helping out, you're multiplying the amount of marketing you're learning by, uh, who knows, it depends on how many books you do. But like if you were to release a book every other year and you're with a group big enough that someone's releasing something every other month, then that's you're going to have 12 times as much learning, right? Uh, marketing learning. And you are going to be in, you know, miles ahead of where you would be if you were just writing, ignoring marketing. And then at the end of that, uh, at the end, when you want to release your book, trying to scramble, right? And being like, how did Brandon Sanderson do this? How does so-and-so in my genre or field do this, right? You're, you're going to be lost and frustrated and that's not going to be super helpful. Whereas if you have a local group of people that you've been helping along, you will already have lots of practical experience and you will have a lot more traction with your book and this is like an iterative thing so like doing it more than once is really helpful because there's a lot of skills here maybe one time when you're helping someone market their book uh you help them working on the pitch another time you do audience research another time you help them you know book some interviews or something like that there's a lot of different skills you're not going to learn them all in one shot so being able to try out different things um or try out the same thing but perfect it across several different launches all of those things uh, are things that take multiple attempts. So make friends and help them with their promotion and launches. Be involved as much as you can. Like obviously don't be a nuisance, but I find a lot of authors are stressed about the book promotion. They'd love help. They'd, you know, uh, be careful about feedback, right? Just giving people unsolicited feedback. It doesn't matter whether you're an author or not. Like that can be frustrating, but you know, if you have a specific offer in particular, so for example, um, you might say, hey, do you want to workshop your pitch? Let me help you test it and post it in a few different places so we can see who's, uh, you know, how it resonates with people and what, what pitch or blurb people like the most. Or like, hey, um, do you, give me a list of, of the types of places you, you want to do interviews or reviews and you know, maybe I can help you schedule them. Or um, uh, sending out letters asking for reviews, helping with that, right? That um, help someone try doing some posts promoting somebody else's book. That's a great way to learn social media in a place that doesn't feel slimy. So a lot of people who are not good at at, at marketing are going to be even more uncomfortable when it comes to marketing their own book and knowing what to do. You can get a little bit more objectivity and a little more space to like come at this as a skill and learn how to do it if you're promoting somebody else's book. So like write posts promoting other people, other people's work. Not only does, you know, that give them some encouragement and, and strengthen your network, but again, that's an, an opportunity you have to learn about how to promote a book and drive engagement in social media, etc. So there's a lot of specific opportunities that you can um, dive into promoting your peers. So as a quick recap, <laughs> that um, one, you can support each other on the marketing front with people not just talking the craft of writing, but talk the business as well, that you can build your network and then you can multiply the amount you learn about marketing. Because remember, and, and give yourself some slack, you're not only learning the craft of being a writer, but you're being an entrepreneur. You're trying to learn the business of being a writer and that's difficult. Uh, so giving yourself some more practice is a very kind way to treat yourself as an author. Don't ignore marketing and then beat yourself up because it's hard at the end, right? That is a very brutal way to approach the business of being an author. So like give yourself a lot of low stakes practice with peers. And then also while you're doing this, a great 
uh, you know, great people to model off of are the people who are one step ahead, the people a little bit ahead at, you know, writers workshop groups or conventions. Uh, they're very approachable. They're very friendly. In my experience here in the Austin area, they have, you know, great advice. They're willing to sit down, you know, for 15 minutes or something like that and do an interview or sometimes go out to lunch or just like a conversation at the convention, etc. There's a lot of avenues uh, for getting a hold of these people. And I generally think their advice is going to be a lot more real, uh, a lot more specific, a lot more grounded, and a lot more applicable to you than like going to YouTube for the most famous person you can think of and hearing, you know, what they think about book marketing.